All right. So I'm going to talk about uh, a library I've worked on over the years that is, is purely need-driven. Uh, we do a lot of Invoke Dynamic in JRuby. We were definitely the earliest language to start using Invoke Dynamic, well before it had even settled into the current API. Uh, so I had versions that worked on previews of Invoke Dynamic that changed completely, changed drastically over time. Uh, so I have felt the pain longer than almost anyone as far as using method handles and building uh, the structures that I need. So hopefully this will be a, a way to improve that in the future. And I, I kind of think about this as on. Uh, I kind of think about this as the missing Java Lang Invoke API. Uh, the existing API is very good, but as many uh, APIs introduced into the JDK are, it's low level. It's the lowest level in mo in many ways. Uh, you might might be able to go a little bit lower with just a raw IR for what you're doing on the the stack, but it's it's pretty low level, and there there needs to be a little bit more nicety above it to to make it easy. So let's take a look. Um, nothing too interesting here. We used to be called the polyglot group. I think we're now called the research and prototyping group because we're doing more than just languages uh, in our, our section now. Uh, so method handles, we love them. They're amazing. They do awesome things for us. We've got uh, function and field pointers that you can inline straight through. It actually acts like a real function pointer, a real field pointer in memory. Uh, we can do argument and return value manipulation. On the, in, on the way in, we can alter values, insert values, drop them. Uh, on the way out, we can make modifications to the return values. Uh, we've got flow control and exception handling constructs. Uh, and all of this stuff bundles up into a nice little callable unit that the JVM just optimizes away as if we had written the raw code directly, uh, usually, sometimes. Um, Improving, improving over time, uh, back and forth, but uh, you know, two steps forward, one step back. So it's, it's good stuff. We love this. It's a great API, and we love what the VM is able to do with it. Uh, but there are some, some challenges. And so we'll talk through some of the challenges first and see how I'm trying to make it a little bit easier. Uh, so here's a sim very simple example. Uh, this is from JRuby, uh, doing a call uh, from Ruby into Java. If we've got a return value that's a long, we need to turn it into our fixNum object. Uh, so we have a return filter here. Uh, but we, oh, but we first, we have to go get the actual handle to the target method, and now we need to check if we've got a long, and then we wrap it with the return logic, and here's our filter to, to do that at the very end. Uh, so the first thing that's obvious about this is that it's kind of kind of verbose. Uh, pretty much everything that you're going to do with method handles is a static method on the method handles class or a static method on method type class. Uh, and so that's the first problem that you run into. If you're just writing it using those, uh, those static references, it's a little verbose. So you pretty much always have to do like a static import of all of those methods to e make the code even readable, generally. Um, so this is a little bit better. Uh, now, the, the other problem that I, I, I mentioned and that, uh, and that Marcus mentioned is that you kind of have to work in reverse. Rather than think about it from the call site forward, which is what is natural for me, at least, and natural for a lot of us, you have to think about it from the target back. And doing those translations in reverse, it really flips your brain upside down. Well, making sure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so dropping an argument, uh, it conceptually, if you reverse it, you're actually inserting an argument. And those, it's difficult for me to keep those in my brain. I can do it, but it introduces bugs because I go back and forth between forward thinking direction and backward thinking direction as far as uh, adapting this stuff. Uh, so this is the real problem here. You would like to say, I want to insert an argument, drop something, do my cast, and then call. But you can't do it that way. You have to start here and then what does it mean to do a cast backwards? Because that's really what you're doing here. And then dropping an argument actually means, okay, well, I want an argument to be inserted this direction. And then insert means I want to be dropping an argument in that direction. It's very difficult conceptually to follow what we're actually doing when we go backwards this way and use forward meaning verbs for it all, right? So the problem number two is the composition in reverse, which makes it complicated to work with method handles, or at least complicated to avoid introducing bugs while working with method handles. Uh, and then it gets worse, because the method handle API is uh, somewhat stricter than the Java language. Uh, we can actually have an, a whole bunch of different integral types that'll come back from a Java call. Uh, and we all, all of these basically have the same logic as far as turning into a fixed num object in JRuby, but we need to absolutely make sure that it matches in that handle chain. So we need to have a cast here. Otherwise, it will dislike the, the mismatching types. Uh, and so that's, that's the problem number three, is wrangling all of these method types. 
I mean, is this not the number one problem when trying to set up method handle chains and bind them together? You get method type mismatches all the time, all the time. Very difficult to take, keep track of it. And you have to be very explicit in almost all parts of the API, uh, rather than you know, having some uh, you know, conventions for how these method types get converted and just doing it for you. Uh, now, who, how, who, how, many, how many people have actually implemented tri-finally logic entirely in method handles? Yeah, and we know how fun it is. It's, 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 it's not as quite as simple as this. It doesn't look quite as nice as this. Uh, and it's really too much code to kind of show the whole thing. Uh, what the, pr the problem here is that try finally, as in Java C, essentially it needs to be inlined into both the exceptional and non-exceptional paths. So we have, to have, we have to duplicate it. We have to have two separate paths that call our, our post logic, our finally logic. Uh, the normal path invokes the logic and then returns whatever result is sort of magically in flight at that point. Uh, so that's got to be held off to the side for a moment. Uh, ex the exceptional path needs to drop that return value, uh, invoke the post logic, and then re-raise that exception that we got at this point. And now you have to do this entirely on the call stack through these manipulations with no temporary variables of any kind, all purely by doing these wrapping uh, folding operations in method handles. Uh, so the result is that something that looks simple when you think about it conceptually from a Java programmer perspective ends up being something like this. And this is actually the more simplified version using invoke binder. Uh, I'm not going to walk through all this, but you've got your exception handling up here. You've got quite a fair, uh, a fair amount of logic down here to handle saving that return value off for return on the non-exceptional path. It's complicated. It's complicated to do. And having to do this every time, you've got to finally in method handles uh, gets uh, tedious, very tedious. So problem four is that there are some forms that we think of as being simple uh, conceptually uh, or at the Java language level that are very difficult to represent in method handles. And some that are impossible, actually, like loops. There's no way to do loops with just method handles. Uh, so there's the first four problems. I added others here that I'll, I'll get to a little bit later, but uh, argument manipulation by exact offsets uh, var args, collects with exact widths, all of these things make it difficult to adapt the same set of handles to many different signatures, as we are apt to see in a typical program. Uh, so these things beco become complicated. Uh, and we'll talk more about the, the bottom three towards the second half. So I think a solution to this is uh, the library I wrote, invoke binder. Uh, there's the various uh, uh, coordinates to get at it, uh, either on GitHub or through Maven. Uh, and in invoke binder is basically, uh, this is the package that we'll be talking about. Invoke binder is basically a way to turn all of this the direction we want. You want to work on adaptation from the top down, from the call site forward. That's what you get with the API. You want to have method handles or method types do a little bit of uh, automatic conversion for you, a little bit of checking along the way, uh, those sorts of things that you get for this. So the first class that we'll talk about here is the, the binder class. Uh, so you start from your call site type. You start from the, 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 the place you're entering this call chain. Uh, and that gives you a new binder. And, and all of the classes in this library uh, produce a new immutable every time you, you modify it. So you're doing all of your drops and inserts and permutes and whatnot uh, and getting a new binder back every time. That means these are all safe to reuse. If you have a chain of adaptations that you've built up as a utility, you can reapply that to other cases uh, without having to, again, start from the bottom and build all the way back up again every single time. Uh, the fold, filter, catch exceptions, other things usually just take a, an additional handle, uh, but they will do a little bit of magic for you because since we're thinking from the call site forward, we know what types we have at a given point. We can make some adaptations. We can be a little bit smarter about how we do some of these rather than having to have explicit, handle, or explicit method types passed in every time we do another adaptation. Uh, some of the endpoints also are smart about this. There's uh, invokes, there's uh, all, all the, the typical uh, meaty endpoints of the method handle API are here, um, and the branching and whatnot. I'll, I'll show some examples that'll make this clear here. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, there's some utilities for larger constructs. There's not as many as I'd like, but there are some of these common patterns that could be made simpler and have just a one-shot call rather than 50 lines of method handle adaptations in your code. Uh, so 
the format of these is basically there'll be a bit of Java code at the top. There'll be what you would do with the regular method handle API, and then there'll be how it would look in invoke binder. Uh, so here we're just doing a, a call to a static method. Uh, here is all the logic for the method, regular method handles API. Uh, get property, the method type logic again, and all that. Uh, binder works a little bit more cleanly, a little bit more forward looking, at, or forward uh, moving, I think. Uh, so we start and we just say what our signature is going to be. It, it doesn't need to be a method type class. We just implicitly say return value arguments. It does that stuff internally, and then it holds on to that method type, and it always knows what type it is at any given uh, level of the transformation. And then we have invoke static. Uh, this lookup can also be passed into the from. It can also be with lookup as part of the sort of fluent DSL-like API, so you carry your lookup through the whole process. Or if you've got these set up as utilities somewhere, it's method type, a set of transformations, and the lookup that it will eventually use for that final target all in one utility, one little box. Um, static field get, again, very similar here. Uh, more interesting is doing the instance field operation. Because we've already carried all these types forward, we know what class we're invoking on at this point. So there's no reason for us to duplicate what target we actually want at this point. Uh, anything that's calling against an instance, we know what it is. It'll just assume it's going to be that first argument and then continue from there. Um, deleting args, again, very simple. Uh, I figured I'd just go with the short names for most of these. Drop arguments is kind of a long name. All I really want is drop. I know what I'm working with. Uh, it cleans these up a little bit. Uh, permuting, again, not a whole lot different than the standard method handles API, but uh, it doesn't do uh, a, just an array because it's in the middle of an argument list. It's var args and it looks a little cleaner and it's just permute. So you get long chains of these things that are very readable compared to the standard method handles API. Drop, drop, insert, permute, filter, invoke, done. Uh, here's a fold, uh, actually is fairly reasonable to be able to just stick another binder right in here. Uh, and if this was just a, an existing binder that had some transformations already, it might just be that binder dot invoke. Um, I don't know if I may have it in the slides here, all of the invokes, the invoke static, invoke, in, uh, invoke instance and whatnot, uh, also have a quiet version uh, that does not do a checked exception so that you can uh, have your code a little bit cleaner knowing that once you've tested it out, it's going to be great, right? Uh, a filter here, uh, again, rather than having to build up an array of filters, just pass in uh, the one that you want. And there are some other forms for doing individual argument filtering. Uh, here's uh, the GWT, uh, the uh, regular Java and, and method handles code is not here, uh, but it's, it's still quite a bit easier to follow. It's, it's pretty clean to read. And because we can always go forward, we can have more of this DSL form. Rather than having to build these things up somewhere else in their own backwards way, we can do it all forward and you can read straight through it and understand what, the whole, the, what, what all the branches are doing pretty cleanly. Um, and then little things like this. This one I, I love. Like if I've got a, uh, a, an adaptation that I'm working on or a long chain of, of adaptations and handles and something's not right along the way, I can't figure out where in that chain the, uh, the, the type goes wrong and doesn't match, um, I can throw this in here. It's basically a no-op that will just, within that transformation, do the printout of the current type and then I can see at each level very quickly uh, what what the status is, where the, went, where the type went wrong, rather than having to add in, pull off a temporary variable somewhere for every single one of those cases. Uh, and then back to our try finally, there is just the try finally in the API. And it does the magic behind the scenes that it needs to do folds and whatnot to get it all to match up, plus negotiating uh, return values and all the parameter types and whatnot. Uh, and this is all you need. So if I want to do try finally and I have a handle that, that matches my signature, just try finally and I'm done. Um, we'll talk a little bit through how this works because I'd like folks to, to contribute and, and be part of this project. Uh, so the binder, as I mentioned, it aggregates a method type and a list of transformations that it will be performing uh, on some eventual target ha method handle. Uh, while building, uh, method type is transformed at each stage. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the binder is always immutable. So you know it's this set of transformations and this type forever. Uh, a transform stack saves off all of these changes as we go. 
largely mapping to the same operations that we have in method handles, uh, but is a, a different representation, a representation that we can l uh, then backwards play back in reverse once we actually want to do all of the method handle adaptations. So we push these all down, and then once we get to the point where we need to actually hit a real method handle, hit a real target, then it plays them in reverse. Uh, you get your nice type checking along the way, both directions, and uh, again, it can be played again against any other method handle. So you get your little utility of transformations that you can throw on any target you want. Um, an example of one of the methods, so here's filter on binder. Uh, like I say, it always returns a new binder every single time. We create a new filter that says start at this index and use these functions to do the uh, argument transformations. Uh, here is the filter transform, very simple. Uh, so down is the call forward direction. Uh, we say we're going down, the direct, down towards the next one. We make our modification to the parameter types based on the functions that we've been given. And so it will check, or it, it will make sure that you've got the right type on the next layer and it will use the intelligence of those incoming functions to do the filtering. So it knows the arguments along the way. Uh, up is when we actually do the adaptation and we're actually starting to build our method handle chain. And here's where the actual method handles argument or uh, method handles filter arguments comes in. And then most of these have nice two strings. Uh, this is another area I'd like to improve. I'd like you to be able to say that I've got uh, an in progress chain of adaptations in a binder show me the whole list and show me how the method types are changing along the way, show me where the branches are, uh, get a better picture of what the adaptations are before I make that commitment to a target method handle, which will make it completely opaque at that point. Um, that's, a big, that's a big advantage to using this. Once you've got an adapted method handle, it's almost impossible to tell what it actually is doing. Very hard to inspect. Uh, but there's more. So this is really nice. This is a very simple way of, of kind of representing forward, forward uh, adaptation of these handles. Uh, now, the, I mentioned earlier, at least three out, of the uh, three out of the seven pain points that I run into are involving argument juggling. Uh, the method handles API generally uses absolute offsets all the time. And so what happens if I've got some adaptations I'm using, and then I want to add uh, an argument somewhere in my system? I realize I, I needed an additional piece of context for this code. Well, I have to go and find all of those places where I'm using absolute offsets and fix them. And I have to do this over and over and over again as my program evolves. And you know, forget about using the same code for multiple target signatures. You generally have to do it all over again for every single target signature that you're going to see. Now you can abstract this a little bit, but it, it, it gets complicated to try and follow it through. Uh, so what we really need here is a representation of an argument list, not just an array of types that represents the arguments. We need to know what these arguments mean. We need symbolic references, symbolic names for these. Uh, and that's what the signature class does. So the signature class combines a method type with a list of argument names. So this is really a, a, a prototype, a function prototype that we've got that has actual symbolic names for everything. And so you can do all your argument manipulations by name, not by offset. You shift it around and it will still work. The exact same adaptations will continue to work if you've added your additional arguments. Uh, even better, you can do some of those operations based on regular expressions. So if you want to drop all of the arg stars, you can do a regular expression that will drop all the arg stars rather than trying to manually calculate or keep in your head where all those offsets are at all times. Uh, and then there's uh, some other niceties like, con like uh, conversion. If signature two is a, an argument subset of signature one, signature one to signature two gives you an array of permute offsets. And so you can, do the, you can keep these signatures as little utilities representing the targets that you've seen, making it much easier to do these adaptations. Well, yes, yes. So an uh, example of using it, um, again, the same sort of fluent DSL-like API, a signature returning string. Uh, and now in this case, uh, we want to turn it into a fold. Uh, so the fold is going to be passing that argument in and giving us a new return value. So it is essentially changed the return value of the signature. But it represents it in the terms I need to know as a method handle user. I've got the signature in hand of my, my, 
my target call and I need to do some fold operation, well, let's get me, give me the fold version of that signature. Uh, and then these are in the forms of tests so you can kind of see what we're actually getting out of it at the bottom. Uh, another signature with a little bit more complexity to it. Uh, returning string, we've got our uh, two arguments, object, object num. Um, we're going to insert an argument after num that's called flow and it's a float. Again, working all with argument names rather than offsets so that this can be applied to uh, different structures of signature. Uh, and then again, you can see the nice uh, two-string output that actually shows what we're working with. Uh, here's some uh, other niceties appending an arg. Uh, again, if you have an insert, you don't need append. You don't need prepend, but they're nice to have in the API. So there's append arg, there's prepend, and so on. Uh, here's the permute, which I, I think is really nice, really uh, clean way of doing this. It doesn't matter what the signature is up to this point. If all I'm interested in is these two values, no matter what the signature is that comes in, as long as it has those, those arguments, I'm going to get those two arguments out the bottom. Uh, there can be any, I can modify these signatures and use them elsewhere and know that I'm always going to get the ones that I'm looking for. Uh, some other forms here, uh, I mentioned the, the, the two transformation, so there's where we get our, our permute ints. Uh, and again, this will work regardless of what that input signature is, as long as we can find those arguments. Uh, here is the uh, regular expression version of this. So the two arguments in this list that match an O would be obj and flow, and we can pull out just those arguments without having to figure out where they are in the list. Uh, similarly, we can say to uh, a signature with just these arguments, another way of doing a permute. Lots of different uh, utility forms that at some time or another I've found useful in JRuby. Uh, the reverse, the inverted permute, uh, where we only want to exclude certain arguments. Again, uh, you'll, have, you'll need to know at some point what additional arguments on the signature there are, but this will work regardless of what the input signature is as long as those two arguments can be dropped off of it. Makes it much simpler to do cases where there's, you know you always want to drop one or two certain values off of the call, call stack. Uh, a little bit larger example here. Uh, here is... Uh, a signature with uh, two, three B variables in the middle. So in JRuby, it might be equivalent to an arg0, arg1, arg2, arbitrary length argument list. Uh, we want to collect all of those, however many there are, into an array. And we can do that with a regular expression. So collect all of the B, if all of the arguments that match B into an array of Bs, uh, a lot simpler than actually trying to figure out on a signature by signature basis where these permutes are and it will work for any number of Bs that come in on that signature. So you can have lots of different ways of adapting. Uh, now this is really cool. Uh, what we'd really like is for these two guys to come together, and that gives us the, the combined ultimate tool for, for method handles, smart binder. Uh, so it has basically all the operations from binder, but using signature to do all the manipulations along the way. So rather than, you can use signature itself and then go back to method handles API and get the types out and whatnot. But you can also use this as the, as the only API you need. Uh, so variable length argument lists are much easier. Again, regular expression transforms. Uh, and so the result is also a smart handle. You get a method handle out with argument names so you can inspect it and say, what the heck was this handle and what was I trying to do with these types? Uh, especially when you have a case as you often do in a dynamic language where you've got an array of the same object, but they have different conceptual meanings. You've got your names of those arguments now that you can actually go back in and inspect. Um, so here, we're, this is going to be our target handle. Just show it quickly here. I guess I have it on this one too. Uh, so we've got our signature again, uh, three integers and a string returning a string. We've got a target that takes an integer array. All that's needed to do this, we've got our incoming signature, our call site signature. Uh, and our call site signature in JRuby, we know what these argument names are, so we keep those on hand. We know that the thread context is always first, for example. Uh, we do our collect, we invoke our target, and that's it. We're done. And for any signature that's coming into this, as long as it's got the, uh, as long as it has B val values in the argument list, it's going to do the adaptation just fine, and then we're done. Uh, similarly, being able to just forward drop stuff off, this is another way of getting that array in there. Uh, drop the arguments by name, uh, and, and very flexible as far as which signatures come in. 
uh, here doing a filter using arg star. So only filter the arguments that match this regular expression. Another nice one to do. Uh, a longer version, so here is a actually code from JRuby. We've got our thread context that always comes in. That's the, the runtime context for the call. Uh, a caller for doing visibility checks. Self, which is this, and then our arguments. Uh, and now if we only want the context and the arguments uh, for a particular call, uh, we can just do this. And it will work across all the signatures that we see in the system. Uh, let's see what we have here. Okay, so. Uh, another little uh, longer example, uh, doing a, f a fold here. Whenever we have something that's going to introduce a value, we just give it a name to represent that new value in the argument list, and it continues to carry forward. Uh, so rather than inserting this anonymous value and trying to figure out why it didn't match up, we know exactly what it is. We know it's an S. Uh, okay, so status of this stuff at the moment. Uh, binder supports pretty much all of method handles, all of the operations that you would use. Uh, and there should be very few cases where you would need to go back to method handles API if you're using binder or invoke binder. Uh, signature also has a wide array of transforms. Uh, certainly everything that's in method type, uh, plus a lot more. Uh, the ability to do the regular expression matches, the utility uh, transformations as well. Uh, and smart binder at this moment kind of has, has what I needed. Uh, so there's more things that can be added there to, to make it more useful to the general audience here. Some to-dos for this that I think might be interesting. Um, well, first of all, being able to analyze this transform chain before we commit it, uh, if we see that we've got multiple drops in a row, or we see that we can condense a few of those things together, well, maybe drop, drop, insert, drop, we can just turn into uh, a permute and some other operation. We can, we can simplify it. Uh, another example is that uh, the collect logic. If you're collecting a group of arguments in the middle of the argument list, right now it has to permute those to the end, do the method handle var args gathering, and then permute that back into where it's supposed to go. Not great, but that's how we have to represent it with what we have right now. Uh, filling out missing functionality, of course, I mentioned that smart binder is not completely full of, of uh, all the forms that we need. Uh, more utilities. So if there's things that you've found useful out there, uh, examples from Remy's JSR 292 cookbooks, stuff like that, we can put more of those in there so that we have only, only implemented it once in our, li in our shared library rather than each of us doing it by hand every time. Uh, now this last one, uh, this last couple are, are kind of pie in the sky stuff. Uh, JRuby support does not officially support Java 6 uh, in, in the JRuby 9000 line, uh, but we support Android. And so that's a problem, because Android does not support all of the Java 7 functionality that we need. Uh, so, but, but we know what these transformations are. There's no reason that we couldn't actually have the end result of invoke binder to dump out bytecode that does all this adaptation for you. So I've got a bytecodable method handle, essentially, uh, that I can then use as if it were a, re a real Java 7 method handle. Uh, so at, at, at FOSDEM, I presented a short version of this talk, and somebody proposed that I could even be spitting out Java code that does all of these different things. It could be the Java code that does the actual method handles operations. So you use this as a utility once in a while uh, to generate all of the, the method handle wrangling for you. Uh, or it could be, again, Java code that's just doing those operations as if you were writing it by hand. So a try finally in the dot Java output from invoke binder would be just a Java try finally. Um, and that makes it possible for us to use invoke binder and something invoke dynamic like on platforms that don't necessarily have method handles. Uh, I've been thinking about this too. The other problem with running on Android is not being able to load bytecode at runtime. Uh, with this chain of operations, we could basically just interpret our way through it and treat it as though it's like la the lambda forms that are inside uh, method handles right now on OpenJDK. Uh, may, may be useful, I'm not sure. Um, I'm expecting that if we did use this to work with Android, we'd be doing some uh, bytecode generation ahead of time to represent our, our non-method handle method handles. Uh, and then more extensive debugging stuff. I'd like to see what the current transformation stack is. I'd like to see a graph of what this is going to look like once I actually commit it to some target handle. Uh, and that's, that's work to be done at the moment. Uh, and that's all I have on this one. So I think I managed to get us uh, ahead a little bit. Uh, time for questions then.
Thank you. Right back there. I can repeat too. Great. Yeah, it's on. It was on. Is it on now? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you able to deal conveniently with um, dynamic named arguments using using these tools, or how do you? Uh, are there good strategies for dealing with uh, a method that takes uh, a collection of an array of, of uh, arguments and an array of their names, and then mapping that to the functions at runtime? Well, it doesn't really. It doesn't represent anything below the semantics of an argument signature, essentially. Uh, there's no reason that it couldn't do more than that and say, okay, collect all of the Bs into this B array, but, but remember, remember that we did this collection and we've got this array of names that goes along with our array of gathered values, and then carry that through to the next level. Perhaps unbox the collected arguments back into their constituent pieces uh, later on. Yeah, I could see that that would be useful. Uh, well, so that's the thing. Since this is all programmatic, the, the question is, uh, can you permute dynamically? Can you dynamically change what you're going to permute? You can pass anything in there and say which arguments you want to permute. As long as it matches some signature and the, si and the signature has the arguments you're looking for, yeah, no problem. Uh, it, it's the lazy commit that really is the value here. As long as the signatures match roughly along the way, it's not actually going to commit to anything until you say, all right, now go to this endpoint, go to this target function or something. In the end, you get, you get a method handle with one behavior that reflects the actual argument. Right. So, so it, it, the, the, the basic idea is that with invoke binder, you're, you're representing abstractly what these transformations are going to be. And with, with smart binder and the signature stuff, very abstractly in terms of I want to deal with just argument names, uh, conceptual arguments. And then once you actually get your method handles, that's the concrete hard form of it. But the same binder, the same set of transformations can be generified across many different use cases. Um, there was, oh, he's going in the back. I'm uh, moving the mic to Vladimir. Uh, Charles, thanks uh, for a great talk. It looks like a really, really good library, which significantly improves the uh, GSA 92 in, uh, interface. Uh, I was really curious when I heard that uh, you do transformations on top of uh, binder representation. And my question is, uh, uh, how hard uh, do you think it is uh, to, uh, to do it uh, downstream on uh, uh, GSA-292 level? Is it uh, uh, possible? Does it uh, uh, have enough uh, type information and uh, representation information on that level? Or you have uh, uh, more structure information uh, in the uh, library you wrote? Well, uh, it's certainly something that could be an enhancement uh, to 292 to add some more smarts about you know, thinking, thinking about it as, as a Java developer would. Here's my argument list, rather than here's a bunch of types that I'm going to move around. Uh, I don't see any reason it couldn't be part of the API, but nothing, none of this is tracked currently. Uh, internally, once you get into the actual Java Lang invoke code, it's all very abstractly just types moving around and, and raw, raw micro transformations. So I, I, there's, there's probably more that we could do there to, to make it abstract enough. But is that what you mean? like optimizing method handle chains uh. underneath. So, so for example, uh, we don't have a, 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 a try finally right now mm -hmm. in the API. And so we represent it uh, quite too verbose on uh, the uh, IR level. Okay. Can we uh, somehow detect such patterns and issue a most optimal bytecode shape for that uh, right stuff. right as, as an example yeah no that makes sense uh, so so, uh, so some of these more complicated forms having better visibility once you get to the method handles level rather than boiling everything down to like raw one op one bit operations you know uh yeah no i i i, 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 I like believe that. that's possible with the with the lambda form stuff 
there could be smarter builds if there was added to uh, method handles dot try finally that knew a little bit more optimally how to represent a try finally rather than through a series of folds that it then has to unfold basically. Um, yeah, I th we certainly could. Uh, I think it's again a matter of uh, what are the key things that we need to add. What could we look at doing as a, a JSR two ninety two enhancement in the future? We have one more question for uh, for Charlie. Uh, I see a hand there in the front. Thank you. Um, um, it, it looks like a very nice of API with uh, SmartBinder. How much um, how much overhead does it add to uh, creating method handles? Because obviously, large applications that, that I'm dealing with have, uh, you know, in the order of um, quarter of a million call sites coming up. Right, right. Um, and I do kind of care about how long it takes to uh, t to initialize all of those. Right. Well, so so if you were going from zero every single time, obviously creating all the additional signatures and the additional binder objects would be a problem. But what what I've found in JRuby is that that's very rarely what I need to do. I have uh, utility binders that are partially transformed. Uh, I have binders that are like intermediate transforms. You can do a binder that has, uh, you can have binder A with its set of transforms and then say, combine yourself with this other binder that does B set of transforms. And so you can have these little pieces that will fit together and that reduces the overall cost of building this stuff up because they're usually re more, re more reusable. So you're not re recreating them every time. Um, it does add, add some overhead if you're going all the way through every single time, but you know, in comparison to uh, actually building the method handles themselves, I don't think it's going to be too much more if you're smart about reusing binders. It does make you wonder whether a binder could be compiled to a more efficient binder. Yes, absolutely. And that's, that's what I I'd like to be able to do that. I'd like to be able to do more inspection. That's the thing. As you're doing your method handles transformations with the raw API, you're losing all that information at every step. Uh, it's it's like, okay, now I'm going to do a drop. Well, you asked for a drop, I got to put a drop into that chain. You asked for an insert, okay, I got to put an insert into that chain. Uh, Invoke Binder could do a lot more to say, here's the entire menu, here's the entire plan for this method handle chain. Uh, let's do some optimization on that and figure out what's a more efficient plan. Uh, and then ideally, as we if we can enhance JSR 292, it will be able to turn somebody's ugly try finally logic into the fast version, something like that. You've made templates for method handles. Yes, basically. Templates for templates method handles. Templates for method handles. Yeah, good. Exactly. All right, thanks. So, thank you, Charlie. Um, now uh, we have scheduled a half an hour break uh, before Remy's session, which is the last one before lunch. So socialize with each other, get coffee, ask questions, uh, find that person on Twitter that you haven't met in real life and ask them hard questions. Uh, <laughs> also, there's t-shirts. Uh, anyone who hasn't uh, received a t-shirt yet should try to find one uh, during this break. I think we have them over here uh, behind the screen, uh, I'm not sure. Uh,